major step to human progress, discipline. If there's one thing to get excited over, that's it. Get excited over your ability to make yourself do the necessary things. What could you make yourself do starting tomorrow that would change it all? No telling. Now see, that's exciting. On any given day, you can massively change the direction of your life. Murder is a clear example that any one person on any given day can forever alter the course of their life. It just happens to be a negative act. But just as sure as you can commit a negative act, you can also commit a positive act and forever alter your life whenever you wish. Now that's exciting. And whatever that act might be that changes your life, start with the little disciplines, get excited over the little disciplines, and get right on those because those will lead to the big ones. You can't handle the big challenges in life unless you take on the little ones. Make a list of all the things you can do. Get right on those. Discipline yourself for those, both for the results and for the muscle and for the practice. So that when life hands you some big challenges, you'll be ready, you'll have the muscle. But see, if you don't handle the small ones, you can't take care of the big ones. Here's what else it takes for life change. Self-motivation, key phrase, self-motivation. I don't know why we call it self-motivation. It's really the only kind there is. You've got to motivate yourself. Because I found out you can't change people. They can change themselves, but you can't change them. Lord knows some I've tried, but see, it won't work. People have to change themselves. So it takes self-motivation to really alter your life. And you don't want to give self-motivation away to somebody else and make it somebody else motivating you. The guy says, boy, if somebody just come by and turn me on, what if they don't show up? See, you've got to have a better plan for your life. The consistent, disciplined, purposeful, constant search for knowledge. It's where the life-changing ideas are. Pursue knowledge with high expectations. Spend the money, time, and effort. They are all investments, but the payoff is so great it's hard to compare the cost to the reward. First is the money. Set up an educational fund for the programs, the books, the lectures, the seminars, and the videos you need for a constant flow of ideas and inspiration. Take a portion of your income each month and set it aside to invest in the search for knowledge. Remember, the best money spent is the money spent to cultivate the genius of your own mind and spirit. Make sure you don't spend more for frivolous comforts and conveniences than you do for education. The money is a small price. The promise is unlimited potential. The next investment is time, which is an extremely valuable expenditure. It's one thing to ask someone for their money, but to ask them for their time is a much more significant request. Knowledge takes time, precious time. The time you spend is irreplaceable. You can get more money, but you can't get more time. However, life has a unique way of rewarding high investment with high return. The major investment of time you're making now could be that small, fine tuning you need for major accomplishment. Last is the investment of effort. There is a great deal of difference between casual learning and serious learning. Learning that opens up the whole mental and spiritual process is truly an investment in effort. And this effort is the investment that opens the floodgates of ideas that can work their magic for you in the marketplace. So I don't hesitate to ask you to spend in a deliberate and consistent fashion the money, time, and effort required to reach your goals. These are the investments that turn on the lights, sharpen the focus, and start turning your wishes of wealth and happiness into reality. Let me share with you two of the best sources of information available. First. There are your own experiences. Become a good student of your own life. It's the information you are most familiar with and feel the strongest about, so make your own life one of your most important studies. In studying your own life, be sure to study the negative as well as the positive, your failures as well as your successes. Our so-called failures serve us well when they teach us valuable information. They're frequently better teachers than our successes. One of the ways we learn how to do something right is simply by doing it wrong. Doing it wrong is a great school for learning, but I would suggest that you not take too long doing this. 
if you've done something wrong for 10 years, I wouldn't suggest taking another 10. But what a close at hand and excellent way to learn. From your own experiences, when I met Mr. Schof, I had been working for six years. I started when I was 19, and when I met him, I was 25. He said to me, Mr. Ron, you have been working now for six years. How are you doing? I said, not very well. He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. Six years is long enough to operate with the wrong plan. Next, he asked, how much money have you saved in the last six years? I said, not any. He said, who sold you on that plan six years ago? What a fantastic question. Where did I get my current plan that wasn't working well? Everyone has bought someone's plan. The question is, whose plan have you bought? Those initial confrontations may be a little painful at first, especially if you have made as many errors as I have. But think of the progress you can make when you finally confront those errors by becoming a better student of your own life. The second way to learn is from other people's experiences. Remember, you can learn from other people, whether they have done things right or wrong. You can learn from the negative as well as the positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories representing both sides of the ledger. Some human stories are called examples. Do what these people did. Other human stories are called warnings. Don't do what these people did. What a wealth of information. Knowing what to do and what not to do. If your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the programs and read the books by and about people who have accomplished great things. All the successful people around the world I know and work with are good readers. They are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's an excellent phrase. All leaders are readers. Successful people also listen to audio programs, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Programs can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and skills. Did you know there are programs and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop a more winning personality, get rich, develop persuasive influence, become sophisticated, and people don't utilize these resources? How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told the world how they became successful. And most people don't want to read or listen to them. How would you explain that? They're busy, I guess. They say, if you worked where I work, you'd know that by the time I struggle home, it's late. I've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV and go to bed. I can't stay up half the night and read. Imagine someone who is behind on his bills. He's a good worker and very sincere. Unfortunately, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused, and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader and a good listener. You don't have to read or listen to educational programs half the night. Although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. All you need are just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can but set aside at least 30 minutes. Hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day, every day. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. You can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a biblical phrase that says, man cannot live on bread alone. The most important thing aside from bread is words words nourish the mind words nourish the soul humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous make sure you have a good diet of words every day and remember that to properly feed the mind you must maintain good balance don't just read or listen to the easy material you can't live on mental candy with good books and programs, you can tap into the treasure of ideas. 
And if somebody has a good excuse for not tapping into the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, I'd like to hear it. You wouldn't believe some excuses I've heard. Don't make the same mistake. Invest the money, get the programs and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. The good news is ideas are not that far away. I've got an excellent phrase for you to consider, one that will serve you well for the rest of your life. Everything you need is within reach. The ideas you need for life change or business change are within listening reach. They're within reading reach. In fact, there's probably a library not too far from you. The problem is most people pass by libraries. Very few walk in. Andrew Carnegie set up all these libraries across the country thinking everybody would stop in. But no, almost everybody drives right on by. Do you know how many people own a library card in the United States? 3%. And guess how much they cost? Nothing. The ideas are within reach. But here's the key question. Who is going to reach? There's a simple biblical phrase that says, if you seek, you will find. But it's very important to know that finding is reserved for the seekers. We don't find what we need. We find what we search for. If you will search, if you'll try, if you'll go, if you'll listen, ideas are within reach and ideas are life-changing. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. A business idea, a social idea, an investment idea, a good health idea. All you need is a specific idea to make an impact on your life. Ideas can help you gather treasure, gather equity, and gather wealth. 10 years from now, you can be right where you are now, or you can be in a new place. The difference between now and then could be significant in terms of money, lifestyle, treasure, and equity. In 10 years, you can enjoy an incredible life if right here and now you make a small change in your thinking to start you on the journey. The key is to start right now gathering the ideas and making the changes that will take you further along this new road. Ideas can change your life and Sometimes all you need is just one more good idea in a series of good ideas. It's like dialing the numbers of a combination lock. After you've dialed five or six numbers, the lock may not come open, but you probably don't need five or six more numbers. Maybe you need just one more number, one more idea. Maybe a seminar or a sermon can provide it. The lyrics from a song could do it. The dialogue from a movie could do it. Conversation with a friend might do it. If you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find that one last idea you need. Once you find that idea, the lock comes open and there's the door for you to walk through. Just one more idea, no matter where you get it, may be all you need to open that door of opportunity. If, however, the lock still doesn't open, you may be lacking in inspiration. Who knows why some people are inspired and some are not? Some people find a great idea and turn it down. Some people say that it costs too much. Some people say that it's going to take too much time. Some people are too busy. There are a lot of different reasons why some people are inspired to take advantage of a good idea while others pass it up. I call it mysteries of the mind, and I just leave it at that. There are some things I don't try to figure out. Some people buy and some don't. Some go for it and some don't. Some change and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, you can usually spot those who don't take advantage of a good idea. A man asks me, how come all this stuff goes wrong for me? I say, I don't know. The most I've been able to figure out is that those kinds of things always happen to people like you. I'll bet he's one of the ones who don't take advantage of good ideas. If he continues on that path, he'll probably never find the right combination. That honor will always fall on the ones who do, like you.